آزادی بیان یا لون زیو فری سپیچ There are many different tools that are being used now of course prison is one of the main ones in my father's case the case of the Bahrain 13 for example even though it was a case that was tried in military court and it was used or tried under the terrorism law and they were charged with things like attempting to violently overthrow the government um, and so on Uh, but if you look at the details of the case, which is something Human Rights Watch actually published a report about, the majority of that case was based on the issue of freedom of expression. It was going after them for things that they had said at the Pearl Square or otherwise, where they were you know, asking people to demand their rights or, or supporting people in their demand for rights and the struggle for a representative government. Um, so that's, of course, one form that they've been using is imprisonment, torture, and so on. But we've also seen other types of tools being used in Bahrain. One of them is defamation campaigns. And so what the government will do is they will start targeting individuals and doing defamation campaigns in the form of whether it's online targeting. So they have these bots online, especially on Twitter, where you have hundreds of tweets being sent out um, about pretty much the same topic. And we've seen them do this, for example, at events. So I remember I spoke at an event called the Oslo Freedom Forum in Norway in 2011 or 2012. And there was a hashtag for that event. And if you clicked on the hashtag, all you would see was tens and tens of tweets saying Maryam al-Khawaja is an Iranian agent or Maryam al-Khawaja is a terrorist. And so they know, from the Bahraini government's perspective, they know that for us as activists, our strongest tool and our strongest weapon in our activism is our credibility. If our credibility is shot, our ability to do our human rights work becomes a lot less likely and a lot more limited. And so what they try to do is to take away your credibility, to limit you from being able to be in those spaces, to speak about what's happening in the country. So these defamation campaigns, of course, don't only stop at the extent of social media, but they also go beyond that. So they've done television shows um, on Bahrain TV and otherwise, where they again try to portray us as terrorists, as you know, anti-women's rights, anti-migrant rights, and so on. And then they'll do more targeted videos. So there's actually, my favorite one is a video online called Letters from Bahrain. And it starts with this one woman saying, Dear Maryam, Zainab, Abdul Hadi, and Nabil. So myself, my dad, my sister, and Nabil, who's our colleague. And then she starts by saying, I will not identify myself because I am afraid that you will send uh, your goons to attack me in my home. And so to protect myself, I won't identify who I am. But if you look at the video, it is so well done in trying to promote us as terrorists, as extremists, that if you don't know the context of Bahrain, if you don't have any background, it sounds very believable. Um, and they spent a lot of money publishing these kinds of videos to try and take away our credibility, to limit us, and to limit our ability to um, have access to public spaces to speak about the situation in Bahrain. Free speech.